So how many years did it take for the world to be in this terror and tyranny now? Al-Mahdi in only a little while, in a short span of time, by the help of Allah, with his knowledge and with his ability, will change this state of the whole world from injustice to justice, from tyranny to peace, just as it was filled the other way. So every, the balances will be returned with the coming of the Mahdi, alayhi salam. And the Mahdi, some scholars say he's born now, and others they say not yet. We don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows this. But as I said before, the minor signs make it a possibility that he probably is right now here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We don't, we can't, the thing about the signs of the last hour is that we can never pinpoint them or describe them or give it a time or a, or a time span exact or to say, you know, this is when it's going to happen or whatever. So we can't do that and pinpoint it. We can only speak in general. Al-Mahdi, as in Sahih Muslim, you'll find this hadith. He will come out. He will appear in Mecca. He will appear in Mecca. And the scholars will identify him with the descriptions that the Prophet ﷺ placed about him. There are certain features about him. White forehead, sharp eyes, big, big sharp eyes, a thin nose which is slightly hooked on the top, Al-Mahdi. They know his other signs. Some of, other, some of his other signs are the following. So that no one can think Al-Mahdi is someone else. He has particular signs. They are all authentic narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu You'll find them in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim and other Sahih, the authenticated hadiths. There will be a group of Arabs from within the Jazeera al arabiyah from within the Arabian Peninsula, somewhere near Mecca. They will hear about the Mahdi and they will not agree with him. They, they, they'll say he is not the real one. And they will come from an eastern direction of Mecca. They'll come in with an army. To, to, to fight Al-Mahdi. So the first people in Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam. But they've erred, gone wrong. As they are approaching, a group of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the earth swallow them. They all die. And a group of them fight him and Al-Mahdi destroys them all. Prophet said he will fight offsprings of two Khalifas and we've had many Khalifas in the past we've had the Ottoman Empire we've had the Abbasi the Fatimi we've had the Umawi Khilafah we have many different and when he says the offsprings meaning of them Allahu Alam which ones exactly but the first ones are Arabs and Allahu Alam they could be of the Abbasi or the Umawi ones and, and he said he will wipe them off So the first of the Arabs. And the companions asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what if among those Muslims who fight him are proper Muslims, but they've just erred and they die within that battle like that? What's going to happen to them? Rasul said, every one of them will be gathered on the day of judgment on the intentions they died for. On the intentions they died for. Even if they were the wrong army. Next after that, so that's, the, that's one of the first major signs of Al-Mahdi. The other signs of Al-Mahdi, Rasul said, he will turn and fight an army that will also prepare an army against him in Al-Furs, Bilad Al-Furs, in Persia. Persia those days, today is known as Iran. Whether it will still be Iran that time or not, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But Rasul told us in the Sahih Muslim that they will be an army from Al-Furs, will also prepare themselves to fight Al-Mahdi. He said he also wipes them off meaning he destroys them. They have no more power. He disarms them. They no longer have any authority or ability. That's the second army. That's the second sign. Now here's the biggest sign. Then he said, he will fight the Romans. Ar-Rum. In those days, Ar-Rum are different, or are, had a different name to what we have today. It's a bit difficult to pinpoint them. But our scholars tell us, point towards the Europeans, Europeans in general. And Ar-Rum, who are the Byzantines then, are today, today the offsprings are mostly the Europeans and their branches. 
How would this fight be? Well, the Europeans or the Romans, they will prepare themselves against this army. Because Al-Mahdi will come out with such force and authority and power to fill the world with the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can already see now how the fight against the Sharia is happening. So imagine someone coming to represent it with power and authority. What are they going to do to him? They're going to fight him. Before that happens, however, in some time, and I'm not sure which time that's going to be. Scholars have differed about it. Rasul Sallallahu told us to salihun al rum You will unite alongside partnership, partnership with the Romans. Again, the Europeans. You're going to be partnership with them. وَتُقَاتِلُونَ عَدُوًّا مِّن وَرَائِهِمْ You're going to fight an army مِّن وَرَائِهِمْ An army of theirs. Of theirs, of the Romans. So the Muslims will unite with the Europeans to help them fight against an enemy that's theirs. That's the Europeans' enemy, the, the Romans' enemy. Rasul Sallallahu only told us, عَدُوًّا مِّن وَرَائِهِمْ An enemy that is theirs, but will help them against them. Has that happened yet? Was it in World War I? Allahu alam. Is it yet to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Is it happening now? Some scholars said it's still it's happening now. Some scholars say it's happening now. Helping them. Allahu alam. In what way? But the point is, Tusalihun al rum There will be this treaty and you'll help them against an enemy that's, that's theirs. After that happens and you will be victorious. He said in some instance, and he even named the place on this hill that the, a Christian will hold the cross and he will say the cross is victorious. And a Muslim will be angry about that because we would have been partnerships with them. Why are you now separating and dividing? He'll break the cross. They have a fight. The Muslim kills the Christian. The group of Christians gather against the Muslim, kill him, and a, and a war erupts, slowly erupts. I want to stop here for a minute, brothers and sisters, and, and just analyze something with you together. We hear of all these different ideologies that are coming up now. Atheism, Satanism, you know, there used to be capitalism and communism and all of those. Fascism, uh, socialism, all these different isms that are coming up. They're all religions. They're all religions. What I mean by religion is the word deen in Arabic means way of life. They're all ways. Anything you hold on to it as a system in your life, it's most important, put it in priority, is your religion. That's your deen. A lot of them of the past showed up and they faded away. They went. Like communism's dying out. Fascism's dying out. Nation, well, you know, uh, a bit of nationalism is going away. Capitalism is still here now with us. Atheism is quite new. And there's many others that are coming up. And these are all, to me, wallahi, are just temporary. They're all going to die out. There's no power for them that really holds them. You will see that really the power that is really happening, the ones who really have authority, are actually the two major religions, which are Christianity and Judaism. Because if you look at any of them, any of these movements, behind them the authority, the power, represent these religions. And then you have Islam. These three major religions, brothers and sisters, are still there and they've always been there and their authority the power on top of them represent those religions those other little things that you see atheism and so all those other isms that you see now they don't really have strong authority on the upper higher rank they don't have that